In this video, we'll evaluate several inverse trig expressions using the unit circle. We could also use reference triangles, which I will show in the next video. The first expression is inverse sine of negative square root 3 over 2. And this could also be expressed as arc sine. And if this is written as arc sine, it means exactly the same thing. We want to find an angle that has a sine function value of negative square root 3 over 2. So the input is the sine function value, and the output is going to be the angle. One of the most important things to remember about evaluating inverse trig expressions or inverse trig functions is that the output or the range has been restricted. There's an infinite number of angles that have a sine function value of negative square root of 3 over 2. However, the output for inverse sine or arc sine is restricted to or limited to the closed interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And for inverse cosine or arc sine, the output or range is limited to the closed interval from 0 to pi radians. And for arc tangent or inverse tangent, the output or the range is limited to the open interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And the reason this interval is open is because remember that the tangent function is undefined at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. That's where we have vertical asymptotes. So to evaluate inverse sine of negative square root 3 over 2, we're going to find the angle in this interval that has a sine function value of negative square root 3 over 2. So if we take a look at the unit circle, we're only going to be looking at the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant on the interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And on the unit circle, sine theta is equal to y. So we're looking for a y-coordinate of negative square root 3 over 2, which we see here. So we just have to be a little bit careful here because the answer is not 300 degrees or 5 pi over 3 radians because the angle has to be on this interval. But this is the terminal side of the angle that we're looking for. So here's the initial side, and here's the terminal side. So we'd have to have a clockwise rotation to here. So instead of returning 300 degrees, the angle is going to be negative 60 degrees. Or if we need to express our answer in radians, that's going to be negative pi over 3 radians. So probably the most important thing about these types of problems is knowing the restrictions on the outputs of these inverse trig expressions. If we weren't aware of the range or the output of the inverse sine function, we wouldn't know which angle this expression would return. For inverse cosine, again, we're only going to be looking on the unit circle from 0 to pi radians, or from here to here. And because we're looking for an angle that has a cosine function of 0, and on the unit circle cosine theta is equal to x, we're now looking for an x-coordinate of 0. And here it is. Therefore, the terminal side of the angle must intersect the unit circle at that point. So here's the initial side. Here's the terminal side. And so our angle is going to be 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians. Now for the last example, we're looking for an angle that has a tangent function value of negative 1, where the angle must be in this interval. So we're looking for an angle from 0 to pi over 2, or from 0 to negative pi over 2. And on the unit circle, the tangent function would be y divided by x. So we're looking for a point where y divided by x would be equal to negative 1, meaning the absolute value of the x and y coordinates would be the same, but they're the opposite sign. So here we have positive square root 2 over 2 and positive square root 2 over 2. Well, here the tangent function would be equal to positive 1, so that's not the right point. But down here in the fourth quadrant, we have an x-coordinate of positive square root 2 over 2 and a y-coordinate of negative square root 2 over 2. Well, y divided by x would be negative 1. Therefore, this is the point on the unit circle that we're looking for, meaning the terminal side of the angle we're looking for passes through this point. Again, we have to be careful because we're not looking for 315 degrees or 7 pi over 4 radians because of the specified output for arctangent. So the initial side would be here, the terminal side would be here, but to be within this interval we'd have to have a clockwise rotation, and if the counterclockwise rotation is 315 degrees, the clockwise rotation would be negative 45 degrees, or negative pi over 4 radians. I hope you found these examples helpful, and as I mentioned before, we'll take a look at these same types of problems using reference triangles instead in the next video.